I'd like to give you some tips concerning navigating our local rules. There are two purposes for our local rules. First, to inform the public and the attorneys as to what the court expects from them as to the contents and procedures associated with various motions. Second, to inform the public and attorneys what the clerk's office will do in response to certain actions or failure to perform certain actions. It is important to note that by filing any pleading with the bankruptcy court, you are certifying you're familiar with the local rules. If you breach that agreement or that understanding, you are committing an ethical violation. So make sure you're familiar with the local rules before you file anything with the bankruptcy court. There are also fairly severe results for uh, failing to follow the local rules, ranging from a reprimand by the court to denial of your motion, and may even include sanctions against you and your client. I might also add, following the, failing to follow the local rules adds to the workload of the court's case managers, the judge's law clerks, the judge's courtroom deputy, and even for the judges. I don't think you want to do that uh, because it would obviously put you in a poor light. However, as I said, the local rules can be your friend. They provide a roadmap as to what you need to allege in many of the motions in order to obtain the relief you seek. For example, the local rules provide what must be included on motions for relief from stay and what matters you can file ex parte and those matters which you can utilize negative notice and not set for hearing. Not following the local rules will also increase the likelihood that you will be unsuccessful, which will make your client very unhappy. Another aspect of the local rules is they pres prescribe who receives notices on certain motions. As you know, notice is critical in bankruptcy because you can accomplish so much if you give appropriate notice. For example, notice is required to be given under the bankruptcy rules and the local rules to all creditors on motions to dismiss, motions to reinstate, motions to shorten prejudice period, motions to extend the automatic stay, applications for fees, motions to extend exclusivity period, motions to use cash collateral, motions to waive requirement of credit counseling or exemption from the financial management course, motions to compromise controversies, motions to sell, any motions that contain relief that adversely affects other creditors such as motions to file late filed claims. In addition, please note you must utilize the official creditor matrix or the official list of creditors when you serve all creditors, not one you've drafted yourself. The reason for that is we check to see if you've served the appropriate people and it is very hard for a bankruptcy court staff to ascertain if you have served all creditors if you draft your own matrix. Also make sure you think about who must be served with what motions. Also make sure you think about who must be served on what motions. For example, you serve different people on a motion for relief from stay in a Chapter 7 and a Chapter 11 case. Make sure you're serving the appropriate person. If you're serving Bank X, serving Servicer Y is not appropriate service for Bank X. Now it's fine if you serve Bank X and Servicer Y. But if you're seeking relief against Bank X, you must serve Bank X. Also, if you're targeting a particular party in a motion, it never hurts to serve them with a process server. For example, if you're seeking to sell free and clear of a particular lien, or someone who has filed a less pendants, and it's very important for you to obtain an order as to that party, pay the few extra dollars and obtain a process server. Finally, you will find a link to our local rules at the bottom of this video.